time-lapse photography of night sky is becoming very popular nowadays. Both professional and hobby photographers are getting interested to make more night escape imagery, especially in time-lapse. Because of longer exposure, you're showing the motion of the sky much faster. Usually in real time, nobody can realize the motion of the sky caused by the earth rotation. Depending on how long the exposure is, you can capture much deeper details of the night sky compared to real-time video. It's almost impossible to capture the details of the Milky Way we can see in time-lapse video with current technology of real-time videography. The image is taken by photo cameras as much larger resolution compared to video cameras. So instead of shooting only in full HD, for example, with normal DSLR cameras, you can go up to 4K or even larger in videos when you're shooting in time lapse. Many of time lapse photographers who are doing this more seriously, they're using motion control systems from dolly rails, which the camera can move couple of meters or more to panning and tilting devices in various axes. But once you have a tracker, star tracker like Polari, you can also use it for panning or tilting in a time-lapse motion. So you can turn your normal star tracker mount for astrophotography photography to a panning device for time-lapse motions. idea behind this is to just let the tracker know that we are located on, on the pole, on the Earth pole. So that means the Polaris, for example, the North Star is located up at the zenith overhead. That means a tracker like this needs to point upward because this is the hole that you need to look through and find Polaris. So from our location, as we are introducing to the tracker, Polaris is at the overhead. So at the North Pole, when Polaris is looking upward, Tracker tries to rotate around and just follow the stars. The stars in the poles of the Earth are just rotating horizontally above the horizon. This is what the Tracker is going to do, just follow the stars along the horizon. And that's exactly what we need for a time-lapse motion in panning. Also use your Star Tracker mount Polari for tilting upward or downward. That's another creative use of the tracker. And in order to do that, you just need to introduce Polari that we are located at the equator. That means Polaris, for example, is right at the horizon. Therefore, the tracker will be vertical like this. And then if you point it this direction, that means this is north, this is where the Polaris is. So when the camera is just uh, shifted 90 degrees from the north is either looking west or the east because the stars at the equator are rising or setting very vertically over the horizon so when you're introducing the tracker that we're looking west for example these are all imaginary suppose because you can point it any direction you can just give it this direction then this becomes north and 90 degrees from this can be west or east so then the tracker would come upward or downward.
The most common use lens in time-lapse photography is generally in the range of 14 mm to 24 on a full-frame sensor camera. So that means in 14 mm you have almost over 100 degrees horizontal field of view and in 24 it's about 70 degrees for a full-frame camera and almost 30% less in many of the crop sensor cameras. And something you need to calculate before doing the motion is that how fast Polari is going to pan across the horizon. So usually any Star Tracker mount is following uh, stars with the speed of the Earth rotation, which is 15 degrees per hour. That's why in 24 hours we have 30 360 degrees one complete rotation. So the normal speed of Polari is 15 degrees per hour. That means in six, seven hours you can uh, go through a whole field of view of a 14 millimeter lens. Let's visit La Palma, a stargazing paradise in the Canary Islands, where we usually do our annual workshop on a sky photography called Astromaster. The sun has just set at the Rocca de los Muchachos, Canary Islands, La Palma, and the earth shadow is behind me. And um, we have set the polar reef for the night to capture one of the most beautiful night skies in the world. We have set the polar reef for use as a tracking device, but now we can easily use it as a panning device for time lapse. A very reliable and easy to set up panning device for time lapse. For this, we have a separate accessoire which is available in the polar reef store or through your dealer. It's a very smart designed base plate. So now we take away the polar meter for a moment I will also put away the camera which is very easily done then I remove the polar from the tripod and I will attach the base plate you can see it even has a compass built in the base plate is designed so as you can use it with a large screw or a small screw by the same time. Once you have leveled your tripod using the bubble, you can even remove the ball head and use the polary as low as possible directly attached to the tripod, which further increases stability, puts it low to the ground and further reduces weight. So now I put back the camera
and now can test if the camera is also leveled and can now with the second ball head easily move it to the desired angle. This is set up very easy using the dialer here which has indicators for a general illumination, a half speed, a star speed, even a sun and a moon speed. The half tracking speed is used for the polary using it for a long focal length like 70 mm upwards, 50 mm even 200 mm. With this tracking speed you can beautifully pan very slow with long focal lengths. The next speed is the star speed which is usually used to track the polar and to track the stars but this speed is also very useful for wider angles like 24 mm, 14 mm and um, the new version of the polar coming on the market soon will even uh, have a double speed for super wide angle or for moves where you have a very short interval during the day or even, even for moonlight you can use it. So my plan tonight is the Milky Way will come up over there and I will track it and move to the right, move to the right until the sun goes up. So when you want to use the polary uh, for long transitions from day into the night and from night into the day, you need a good power source. For shorter transitions you can of course use the built-in batteries of the polary, which are two AA batteries. If you use high ampere batteries you can even go as far as um, six to eight hours or even more. But even if you need more power you can use any available power source on the market usually used for iPhones or Androids like this power tube here and can just go in here with a USB cable directly into the USB port of the Polary. When you open up the battery compartment of the Polary you will discover a little switch where you see S and N. This is actually a switch for the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere. If you put it to the southern hemisphere also the LEDs of the Polary will indicate this by glowing green. If you put the little switch to the northern hemisphere the polar will indicate this by using a red LED light. But furthermore for panning you can switch here to have the polar rotate to the left side and if you switch to the northern hemisphere the polar will go to the other side. Mm -hmm. 